Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. I'm here today with a uh, boat herbalist and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, why don't you tell us who you are and what you do first of all in sort of simple terms. So my name is Melissa Ronaldson. Uh, I'm a herbalist. I've been qualified for about 17 years and I practice from the herbal barge. Um, I to treat patients, I do workshops, and I open as an apothecary. Okay. And herbal medicine is uh, about using plants and plant remedies to treat the same kind of things that you might take to a doctor. So I don't know a huge amount about herbalism, so no, okay. probably a good way to start would be like, so what, what form would the medicines that you provide okay. take in yeah. comparison to like a doctor? Okay. So if you came to see me, I would ask you lots of the same questions that a doctor would. You know, when did it start? How does it feel? How long has it been going on? I would use some of the same instruments that your doctor would. I would might listen to your chest. I might take your blood pressure. I might look in your ears. Um, I'm a Western herbalist, so I would feel pulse and I might look at a tongue, but those aren't my particular skills. I tend to do more mainstream Western diagnostic training or practice. Uh, if there were things that I were, weren't happy with, I might send you to a specialist or to a doctor for further tests. I would also look at diet, I'd look at exercise, I'd look at lifestyle, and I might prescribe tinctures, which are plant extracts in alcohol, or I might give you some cough medicine, or I might give you some chest rub. So here, these are the over-the-counter things that I might prescribe. So we've got chest rubs, bruise ointments. That ointment would be for cold sores and mouth sores. Herbal snuff, which is fantastic for clearing sinuses and sinusitis and colds. All sorts of different herbal teas. So, for example, there's an allergy mix and a sleepy tea and um, a flu remedy. I mean everything is individualised so even though I've got a tea mixture that says sleepy tea mm -hmm. in my experience people don't sleep for 50 different 50 million different reasons so for some person the tea might not make any difference at all mm -hmm. and it might be useful to give them a day mix that's more calming or I might say right let's hear some Epsom bath salts or some supplements or some magnesium or I'd also be going why aren't you sleeping yeah. Above all, I'd be saying, why aren't you sleeping? So that, that gives the sense of, of herbal medicine being... It's medicine. It's, it's more holistic than the way that the med medical model has ended up mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, and it tends to use whole plant extracts as well. That's really important. Um, so these are, are mixtures of different herbs. So, for example, that flu mix... There's three different plants in there, but there's possibly 3,000 different chemicals because each plant has got hundreds of chemicals in. Mm. And we used to, well, the medical model, the pharmaceutical model, assumes that we want the single bullet, bullet single compound to get yeah. to the root of the problem. And sometimes that's really true. But sometimes the interaction between those compounds is what delivers the outcome that you want. Mm. So something might increase the circulation and be anti-inflammatory, or it might help you sweat, and it might be antiviral, as well as doing, and it might help with the liver, it might support your immune system. So it's doing all those things together. Oh, that's really interesting. Where can your boat be found? Do you take it to um, events and things, or do you stay in one place? I tend to see patients at Tottenham Hale because that's accessible from the tube. When we do the floating apothecary, uh, that's changing. I mean, when I started, it was really easy to turn up anywhere and mm -hmm. people would know where I might be. That's 
not become possible. So I'm still figuring that out. I think that it would be nice to have floating markets. Like we did a Christmas market at King's Cross mm -hmm. with the book barge. Yeah. And I think that that is probably where most of my apothecary time is going to end up. Not just... If you're out of London, you could turn up on the towpath in trade. You can't do that in London. So I think it would be organised floating markets. Yeah. Maybe three or four a year. Okay. Is there somewhere sort of online where you post if you're going to go and do a market? The Facebook page is Storm Vogel the Herbal Barge and the website is www.herbalbarge.co.uk. Okay. And that's got lots of resources on as well on the website. Great. I'll put a link in the description just so, because obviously Storm Fogel spellings could differ quite significantly. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me what herbal snuff is? Yeah. It's my really exciting, it's not my invention, it's my rediscovery. And I used to suffer from really, really, really bad sinusitis. That's how it started. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that netty douche salt up your nose was really effective, but was so horrible, really difficult to sustain. Yeah. So I tried to invent something that was pleasant and nice and then a funny thing happened that it was so pleasant and nice people did it more and when I took it to Glastonbury one year we suddenly realised that Herbis could stay up all night dancing on the one with chilli in <laughs> and, that, and that obviously the light bulb went on and, and I realised that the reason that people take cocaine is because it's up their nose it's a really efficient way of getting into the bloodstream, bypassing the digestion. So I started off thinking it as behaving very locally, like nourishing the mucous membrane, getting rid of infection, because sinuses look like this. You've got holes that are kind of downward sloping with a small exit. So they're really easy to get kind of reservoirs of, of muckiness and infection. Mm. And if you can clear that out, like, and there's little scilla, there's little hairs that could be wafting stuff up, but when they're gunged up, they don't do it. So the, the snuff kind of goes in, helps with that process, but also some of those chemicals, like I think the chilli is immediately makes you really wake up as well as making your nose run. I think the rosemary is uplifting. So there's... There's all those functions that I didn't see, all of them, all the snuffs are based on marshmallow, a herb called marshmallow, which is a root that's really mucilaginous. So original marshmallows were cough sweets. So you've got this root, you beat it up with egg white and sugar, and you made these little marshmallow cough sweets based on this plant. But my, I use marshmallow root as the basis of all the snuffs because it's so soothing to mucous membrane. And that's the first thing you want to do. Whatever you want to do, you want to make Soothe. the mucus, yeah. And, and then pull things out and then you want to be antimicrobial. And so they're, they're and, and the, the more I looked into it, it turns out, of course, I didn't invent it. Ayurveda has been doing it for 4,000 years. And there was even, um, about to about 100 years ago. I mean, nowadays, only a few herbalists use it. But 100 years ago, herbal snuff was quite a big therapeutic tool. And it makes sense. It's really instant. It's one of the few things that I have that's instant. That's super fascinating. Yeah. What came first? Your training to be a herbalist or boating? or So was it like the business and then you moved it onto a boat? Or was it kind of the other way around or how no did that it was I was a herbalist first I was a herbalist first but I had lots of friends on the river mm -hmm. and I wanted to be on the river but I had a beautiful teenage son and I, it just wasn't accessible to me for mm -hmm. us both to live there and it wasn't really accessible for years anyway yeah. but then I had the idea that I could have my business but it you know this boat was pretty much just a hull when I got it we took the cabin off and rebuilt the cabin. Well, I didn't, but Paddy and Kitty did. And then everything's been built purposely to be the herbal bard. Yeah, it seems like it's sort of a perfect fit. 
yeah it's really lovely in here and I imagine that probably is really nice as well just for people to come to see a herbalist mm. and it feel really pleasant and nice. No, I think that's really important. I was looking at somebody else's business the other day and I was a bit taken aback how much more time I spend with my patients, which isn't a massively good business model, but it is the nature of being on a river mm. and it is possibly the nature of, you know, as a herbal apothecary, people can come in order something we could do a quick 15 minute screen yeah. but when people make an appointment having the space to just be here and be on the river and work things out is part of my herbal medicine practice I think mm. so I can't speed it up and make it really so how long do you normally spend with the client I can be for the the initial consultation is going to probably be two hours including making up the medicine maybe including a physical examination mm -hmm. and then um, repeat, you know, return. Depends on the person. I, when I do have people who come in, pick up their medicine every six weeks, hello, how's the football? We don't even, you know, <laughs> particularly go there. But there are other people who we change the medicine every time and we really, they use the time to focus and think of targets and, and to talk. And I have a background in, before I was a herbalist I worked in mental health and that's still quite an interest to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend to be tuned in to that layer of things. On this top shelf we've got various kind of bruise ointments. Comfrey number one and number two and number three. These are all made from comfrey from and on the river uh, and from my garden. This one contains daisies and arnica and it's for bruises instantly when you just first fall over. The number two has got camphor in, smells quite strong, and elder leaf. And that one is for old injuries. So think where you've got inflammation, arthritis, stuff like that. I've got another one that's got a lot of chili in. This one says caution, camphor and chilli and I tend to use that for more muscles where mm -hmm. you need heat yeah. into the situation. Up here as well I've got um, cold sore ointment. I've got a party mix, it's not all about illness, sometimes it's about fun. That contains guana and licorice and it's just that thing for just gently keeping you awake when you're out and about. It's fun. Uh, I've got skin creams, I've got herbal snuff, I've got bath salts. Here are actually some herbs macerating. That's an oil that I'm making that will become a chest rub later. This cleavers in cider vinegar. I really use cider vinegar a lot but I think and it's a really good thing to infuse and I've been using it much more. I've done a little bit of work on the refugee camps in Calais and in the jungle and I had to really think about what medicines I use because we're not using alcohol because it's such a big Muslim community and I've you know obviously I've had Muslim patients for years but not in such a large number and not so strict mm. so that was really it's been really useful for me to think about using a different thing to extract the plants into and cider vinegar is brilliant of course it is so I'm now I'm using that for lots of things. This is the teas. So we've got an allergy tea, a ladies mantle tea. This mix tends to be, it's got raspberry leaf in, so I'd give it to somebody if they were pregnant or if they were trying to get pregnant. Flu teas, digestive teas, and then there's all individual herbs along there. So what is in this tea? <laughs> Two herbs, cleavers, Gallium Mepurine, or later, other than otherwise known as Sticky Willy. Uh, and you'll recognise this from the towpath, you'll see it everywhere, it sticks on you like that. I recognise this from my childhood. Yeah. We used to stick it on everyone's backs. Or, or, yeah, put it on people's backs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is a Traditionally, there's not much modern research about it, but traditionally it's used as a lymphatic tonic. And your lymph system goes parallel to your circulation but doesn't have a pumping thing. So, and it suffers from bottlenecks 
And you know, when you get lumps up here, this is like your immune system being very busy. Yeah. But it needs to be flowing for those immune activity to be taken away, go into your gut and to be passed through. So this really helps with that. There's no time of year or no infection that this isn't useful for taking. It's really safe. You can drink it all day with probably most medications. Mm -hmm. And it's available on the towpath. And it's, there's a, Cole Pepper said that if you drink this for 100, for 40 days, your skin will be so beautiful and clear, everyone will want to marry you. I know somebody that did it for 39 and panicked. <laughs> but it, it's a, it's, if you pick loads of it, you can even feel on your hands that it really softens them. Mm. So you can use it internally and externally as a skin. Cool. And then we've got nettle, which is just a fantastic source of iron. And because it's really full of vitamin C as well, and you need vitamin C to absorb iron, it's an amazing source of absorbable iron. You, you don't waste it. Um, it also has a histamine. It contains histamine. It contains serotonin-like chemicals, but it possibly works as an anti-allergy plant by stimulating your antihistamine response. We don't know that, but that's a that's a, a possibility of how it works. Okay, cool, great. Thank you very much for having me, and thank you for the lovely tea. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to join us again on this narrowboat adventure, you can click subscribe. If you want to hear anything more about the Herbal Barge or find out when you can visit, there's going to be some links in the description. And uh, do come again and have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye.